Welcome to Mark Arnold's Finance. I have a dividend dilemma, and this is something, a dilemma that I think a lot of investors have. So I'm gonna share what the dilemma is here in a minute, and I'm also gonna share with you what I plan on doing about it. Before I get started, if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I'm somebody that is very transparent. I have a diverse amount of content, and I'm always learning and growing, and I'm sharing that with you guys. So let's get started with that transparency and look at my portfolio performance. We will see here that it's actually taken a little bit of a dive in the last couple days. The whole market's going down after a strong uh, month, we'll say. So I'm about uh, just shy of 7% in the green. Uh, that's up $2,768. So look at this. If you have any questions on any of my companies, my performance, let me know. I'd love to talk about it. I'll go over in more detail um, a portfolio performance overview in, in another video, but I want to focus on my dividend dilemma. So what is this dilemma I have? Well, a lot of investors try to smooth out their income uh, month over month, but sometimes, depending on the companies you have, it gets very volatile. Some months you get a lot of uh, dividend income, some months you barely get any. So my dilemma is that in the months of February, May, August, and November, my dividends are pretty low compared to my other months. So I'd like to smooth that out a little bit. Of course, there is no reason to do this other than smoothing out your income. The main rule is to always have quality companies regardless of what, uh, what they pay and when. That's my rule of thumb, but if you can smooth them out, why not, right? The goal is to have that passive income and to make it more regular just, I think, makes it a more dependable, predictable thing as an investor that hopefully one day when you retire, you can take out decent amount of funds every month. So in those months of February, May, August, and November, I only have three companies that pay me dividends. The first company is AbbVie. In August, they paid me $12.69. Now AbbVie has a dividend yield of 3.91. My yield on cost is 5.74. Because the, you know, I bought in at a lot lower price, it's gone up pretty massively for me. Uh, so I'm getting, I'm collecting a 5.74% dividend yield on cost. And so that's very important is, you know, when you hold a stock, you, that's why you don't just want a stock that pays a healthy dividend. You want a stock where its price appreciates and grows because then your yield on cost is going to get higher. You're going to get paid more uh, as they raise their dividends, especially as well. Um, next stock is AT&T. Of course, this is a stock I'm not fond of. I do want to sell out of this at some point, but right now in August, it paid me $16.65. It currently has a dividend yield of 6.05. My yield on cost is 4.92. This is why you have to get into quality companies. I got into AT&T at the wrong time for the wrong reason when I first started investing, and it's hurt me, right? I'm getting a lower uh, yield. Uh, my stock price has gone down. I'm in the red about 18.71%. So that's how much I've lost on my investment. Uh, so that's why it's important uh, to really research and pick good companies. The last company that I got paid in August, and these are the only three that I'll get paid, is Realty Income Corporation. Of course, they're a monthly dividend payer. And I got $7.43. Um, they're currently at a dividend yield of about 4%. My yield on cost is 482 so it's been a steady, solid stock. I think this is just one that's more dependable that I'll probably hold for possibly the rest of my investing life. Uh, I, I do like realty income. Uh, so yes, I want you to take one thing from this. Um, it's very important when people invest, they can say, oh, it pays a dividend yield of 8%. I'm collecting 8% a year. Are you? Because with AT&T, if that stock price depreciates, you're getting less than that 8% at that point. And so a lot of people like to you know, brag about it, but if it's a low quality stock that has gone down over the last year, two, five years, they're getting a lot less than what that yield is saying at that point in time. Uh, so you gotta be careful what people say as well. My lowest months, I wanna share a few charts here from my own portfolio that I built. Uh, the first one shows you all my dividends that I've collected year to date and I highlighted my low months. February, May, August, and November are my lowest months, and it's only those three companies, AbbVie, AT&T, and Realty Income, that pay me. 
Uh, so far this year, I've earned $570, so I definitely uh, want to smooth this out because you'll see here, I get over $100 in the big quarters, which a lot of companies pay, um, and then I get close to you know 60 bucks in the other quarters where I'm only getting 30 some bucks now because AT&T in February was paying out more than they cut their dividend almost half, so that's why I went down to 30 bucks. Another way to look at this is with this chart that I built, and I want to highlight uh, this current year. I highlighted the low point, so you'll see February on that blue chart, um, highlighted in yellow, and then it goes up, goes slightly down, but then it goes further down in May, and then up slightly down, further down in August, which is now. Uh, so I would just like to smooth this out more if possible, if I could find some quality stocks, and it so happens that I have two stocks on my watch list that would both pay out in these months where I'm low. So I'm really eyeballing these and hopefully I get a chance to buy in because I just don't want to buy in to do it to smooth my income out. I want to make sure I'm investing in good quality companies at the right time. Those two companies, one of them is Ally Financial. They currently pay a dividend yield of 3.17%, which is great. Now with this stock, it is a cheap stock, low valuations, but I think it's risky. And the reason is because most of its business is surrounded around the auto loan industry. And as we know, that if that takes a tumble, that would bring a company like Ally Financial down uh, huge. They also had to get bailed out in the financial crisis due to similar issues. So it's one that I am eyeballing. I'd like to see this get below $30 per share, and that would be my buy-in point. Right now it's at 35. Um, Berkshire Hathaway just invested heavily in this, Warren Buffett's company. Um, and so it's one of my balling, it's on my watch list. This would pay me in these low months to help smooth out that income. Um, and let me note this, I do wanna get out of AT&T, so I'm trying to find a good replacement for it. I'm down over 18% as mentioned in AT&T, so I'm just waiting for that point where I can sell out at either a small loss or a gain, would be nice. I think it will get there eventually. I just have to be patient probably in the next couple years, but I wanna get out of AT&T. Ally would be a good replacement uh, my other company that I would like to buy that pays dividends in these months that are low for me would be Costco. Now, Costco pays a dividend yield of 0.6%, which is really low, but they also pay special dividends every few years. So the last one was $10 a share that they paid back in November of 2020, and that came to about 2.5% yield. You add that to what they already are paying out on the other months, that that special dividend didn't hit and it knocked up this Costco's yield to about 3% on that special dividend payout year. Uh, so that's awesome. You know, you might get a few years of just that 0.6, but then you might get those special dividend years of 3% overall, which they're saying might happen this year. So Costco, it's a high quality stock. It's, it's got some massive growth behind it. It's made investors, you know, very happy but it is currently at a very high price and valuation. In fact, it's at a PE of 44, a little over 44. So this one, it's, it's one that I would love to get into. It dropped down to about 416 a few months ago. I almost bought in, uh, but I thought, oh, let me see if it get down to the 300s. It didn't, now it's up to like 550. So it's, it definitely has gone up a lot. But if I see any kind of dip, a healthy dip in Costco. This is another company I'd buy into. So that's Ally Financial and Costco that would help smooth out these months of February, May, August, and November because eventually I'm gonna get rid of AT&T. So I need something to help me in those months, bring in some income. And these would be two companies I'd love to add uh, should they go to price points that I would buy in. So I do have some cash set aside to buy these stocks. So I'm excited, but it's gonna be a waiting game. It's gonna be a uh, you know, you just don't know what the future is. So I could lose out, right? They could both just keep going up, but they could also have some uh, dips maybe this year at some point where I'd be happy to buy in and hold long-term. Costco would be a forever hold. Ally Financial would be a hold that I'd keep for as long as I felt this company was strong. Of course, if Costco, if their fundamentals change, I'd sell out, but I think that company will be around the rest of my life and be a quality company for that whole time where Ally would have to keep more of a close watch on because they are higher risk, I feel. And Ally's PE, I think, is at a five compared to Costco's 44. Of course, there's a lot of other things you have to consider. Uh, but yes, this is my dividend dilemma. I have those months that pay me 
a lot lower of, uh, dividend passive income than the other months. So I'd like to smooth it out some. Also with AT&T, that's a huge, that's my biggest pain stock in those months. So if I got rid of that, it really hurt those months of income. And it's nice to get those dividends so you can take those and buy more stocks. So that's my dilemma. That's what I plan on doing. If you have a similar dilemma, let me know what you plan on doing. If you care about smoothing out your income or if it doesn't matter to you. I always say buy quality companies regardless and I found these two companies that I feel are of quality and have future potential. Uh, so yes, let me know what you think of this dilemma. I know a lot of people out there have the same dilemma. They want to smooth out their income and buy companies that pay out for them every month or get income from a group of companies that pay out every month, um, you know, pretty sturdy amounts. So let me know what you guys think of this video, my dilemma, how I'm planning to fix that dilemma, and we'll see you soon on Mark Arnold's Finance, and thank you very much. Have a great day.